Let's return now to the follow dresser. And as you can see, I've got some geometry down here. I've actually brought in the tiles that we made in the last video. And this is what they look like. Okay, I've simply arrayed them two times like that, and it's seamless, and I've just copied it over there. So just to make a slightly bigger floor. So we've got the floor done, and I'm gonna get to work on the actual dresser itself now. So I'm gonna hop over to here. UV editing, and let's just get rid of that. All right, this is going to be actually very simple what we're going to do. We're going to try, and remember some of these pieces are mirrored. I've got that mirrored, and I've actually got the bolts mirrored and sort of separated them so that what I'm going to do for the bolts, I'm simply going to come in here, select them all, and press U, unwrap, and that's going to give me these big circles. I'm going to scale those down because I'm going to have just one material but I want to have a little bit of, of you know geometry for that. So I'm just going to move those up to there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try cube project on this. And let's see how, how well it works. We're not going to put any seams. We're just going to press U, cube project. We get this. I'm going to pack this. And I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to pack it all later. But just for the moment to separate it out, I'm going to press N. And I'm going to use UV Pack Master 3 just because I've got it. You could use Blender UV Pack Islands. I'm just going to pack that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this turns out. So that's done. So I'm going to press H to hide it. And I'll press H to hide those as well. Let's just take that piece there and just U unwrap. It should be nice and straight. So let's just hide that. And let's take this. And oh, it looks pretty weird. We could try Cube Project. Let's see what it does. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to pack that. Separates it out relatively nicely. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, this, I think, is... Okay, that one. For that piece, I can just unwrap that piece right there as well. Let's scale that down a bit. And I'll take these and let's try Cube Project for that. And pack. And we'll see. Some of the pieces might be a little small, but uh, I'm going to bring everything else back now. And I'm going to come in and select everything. And I'm going to pack it there. Some of the pieces might be larger than I wanted them. They're certainly not all equaled out. I could try average island scale. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. And I will have rotation enable uh, on, actually. Um, some of the wood may be, the grain may be facing the wrong way, but we've, we've unpacked it. All right, so I'm going to select it all, and let's create an FBX. All right, in Substance Painter, I'm going to click New. I'm going to switch this to OpenGL. I'm still using an older version of Substance Painter. And I'm going to open up the dresser. There it is. Okay, it looks like everything is facing the right way. I'm going to turn on Anti-Aliasing. And I'll go ahead and I'll bake this at 2K, uncheck ID and thickness, and bake. We may have some problems up here there's going to be a seam that it created but i think we can either hide it or it may not even show up all right so we just did the easiest way of all to unwrap this all right so i need i think i need two main textures some metal and some wood on this so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to create a folder and i'm going to call this metal and i'm going to uh, let's see. Let's come over to our materials. I'm going to choose this aluminum. That may not be in a newer version of Substance Painter, but you can use uh, any metal that you want. I'm going to take that and drag that here and drag it into the metal folder. And we're going to work on that. So I don't want it that white, so I'm going to bring it down quite a bit, almost like halfway. I'm going to bring the roughness up almost halfway. And that's all I'm going to do there. And then I'm going to add a filter. Right click, add filter. And I'll do the filter. I usually use this uh, matte finish. I'll do that. But I think I'll take the scale down to like one. And I'll take the brushing intensity down a little bit as well. And we'll have that as our basic metal. You might see a little bit of a seam there. But once we put dirt and some other stuff on it, that may not bother us. So we've got our base metal there. And what I'll do next is let's just add a fill. I'll click on color. So we have just the white there. And I'm going to add a black mask and a generator. And let's try this curvature. It may not be overly visible on the metal. It might be on other spots. 
and I'm going to bring the balance down a little bit so we get almost a stylized metal. Now we are getting a little bit of a line there and uh, let's see what we can do. This is going to be, I'm going to call this uh, curvature. I'm going to add a paint layer and let's come over to like the dirt brush. Just try this. See, that'll put more white in there. Let's see if I can kind of get rid of that. See there? It's pretty much gone. Now, this is mirrored on the other side. I don't want it to be too evident, but something like that. You can always go back in and put a little bit more, you know, so it just looks like scuff kind of. But, you know, no one's going to see that super up close. So we have some white. Uh, you decide if that's too much. You can take it down a little bit. Um, so we got some curvature there, and I'm going to put some dirt uh, on here as well. Very simply, color and roughness. Bring the roughness up because dirt usually is kind of, kind of rough. Dark brown, a black mask, and a generator. We'll try the, just the dirt generator, and of course it'll go nuts. But we'll just dial it back so we get more dirt in there, and I think that looks fine like that. Anyhow, that's the kind of look I'm going for. Now there's something else I'm going to do on the metal in a bit, but let's just leave that. I'm going to call that dirt. And let's go on and work on the wood as well. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this wood. And I'm going to come to my smart materials and type in wood. And you probably have this wood walnut in as a default material. Uh, if not, you could try any other wood or you could search for that on Substance Share. I'm going to drag that into the wood and we're going to have it like this. Now, I want to make this a little lighter, so I'm going to take the color and just uh, drag it up. Do something like that. You can mess with all this, but I don't know that I'm going to bother. Um, I want this wood in a specific place, so I'm going to add a black mask to the folder level. Come over here, and I don't want to do that. And the properties here, I'm going to choose uh, Mesh Fill for this. I'm going to click there, and it'll put it all in there. So that grain looks like it's going the right way. All right. And I also want to uh, put it on the drawers, but I don't want it everywhere. So I'm going to switch to... Um, UV chunk and just see if I put it there whereabouts it goes to so see there's a little bit of metal I want it to go a little further so um, what I might do is do the whole thing and then press X and try to get rid of it here let's see if I got rid of all around no not quite so a couple more clicks just to make sure and of course, these are arrayed, so you know we'll uh, that'll that'll go on all three of the drawers. I think we're okay, unless I'm missing something. All right, and I got the metal on these things, which is what I wanted basically. Now, there's not a lot of texture density or resolution on there, but that's that's okay. And you know, then you can you can play with the the wood if you want. But what I'll do is, as I'm going to do the same kind of thing, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to copy those layers and I'm going to paste them in here so I can get some dirt and I'll leave the dirt on actually. And But the curvature I want to adjust and I don't need the paint layer anymore. That was specific for over there. I'm just going to bring the curvature balance down. You can play with the other values under under here as well. Uh, and I will also reduce it here, just so there's a light line. Some people do like an off wood color, but I'm going to do white so that it's kind of stands out and it's kind of stylized. So that's pretty much what I needed to do, um, except for one more thing on the metal. I just want to look at this dirt and decide if I want to try to it's mostly going in here of course you can hand paint dirt around the edges of the drawers if you want but I'm not going to bother with that I'm just going to take that down a bit okay and really the final thing that I want to do is come back to the metal here and I'll do it just above the base metal I'm going to add a fill 
and I'm going to use just height. I'm going to drop it down a bit, maybe more than I need to, to start off with. I'm going to add a black mask and a fill. And in the grayscale, I'm going to search for scratch or scratches. And I'm going to use this grunge dirt scratchy. And in order to see it better, I'm going to switch the size or resolution up and it makes it look a little bit nicer. And then I'm just going to bring the balance down and I'll, I should get some here and there. Uh, yeah, and let's bring the light over here. I don't want too much. I just want a little bit of, of you know, destruction going on here and there. Okay, see that's mirrored, so, you know. Let's say we bring it up a little bit more. And then if we wanted to like tone this down a bit, I could come in here. This is, uh, I'll just call it scratches. Uh, I could come in here, I could add a paint layer and I can press um, X to get black and that should paint it out. Whereas if I press X and it's white, it paints it in and the flow is relatively low right now. So uh, I'm painting it in, I wanna paint, paint some of it out. You know, just to, just to do that. So if there's a certain area where you go, oh, it's too much. And it is too much, by the way. Uh, now that I look at it, I'm gonna decrease the balance there. I just want that kind of thing. Once again, I can come to my paint layer and I can get rid of a little bit of this, you know, that kind of thing. Or I can, put some in. All right, anyhow, that's the general idea. And that is what I wanted to do right there. Okay, so let's export that, unless I'm forgetting something, and I might be, and I hope I'm not, but let's export that and bring it into Blender and put it on our tile floor. All right, so I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to call this uh, Fallout Dresser cabinet, whatever it is. I'll save this and I'm going to export the textures. I'm going to use um, one of my uh, templates that I've created. It just has short names. It's just PBR Metallic Roughness, but I've gotten rid of some of this stuff at the front uh, in terms of the naming. And I'm going to bring that in and I'll just put that in Texture Test. Just leave it at PNG 8 bits. That's fine. Now this will give me an AO, which I likely won't use anyhow, but uh, well, let's go have a look at this. All right, over to the shading tab and I'll just select something and I'm gonna click new. And I'll call this follow dresser. Select the principal BSDF. As you can see, I'm using an older version of Blender. Your principal looks a little bit different, but should work the same. Shift control T. Follow dresser. I'm going to go from base color, leave the AO down to roughness, bring that in. Let's go over to layout and I'm going to select everything and select this last and control L, link materials, see if that worked. It didn't, so I'll do it this way link materials. Let's try that. There we go, we got the materials on it. Uh, in my version of Blender, I can add ambient occlusion here. And uh, so I will go ahead and do that. I like to put that at one and two, depending. It simulates more dirt. And let's bring the floor back. And that is basically it for what we wanted to do. All right, without getting into the rendering and all. And then I would just try some different lighting effects. I, I happen to like that soft kind of look. Okay, so we did the tiles, we modeled this thing, we've textured it, and it looks pretty good. Nothing much on the back there. And that is going to be it for this little series. So if you do model this and texture it in Substance Painter or any other way, I hope you get a nice result. And thank you for watching, and thank you for helping me make it to 35,000 subscribers. That's fantastic. That was a milestone I wanted to reach, and I'm there now, and it's all because of you. So thanks so much. We'll see you next time.